The Von Karstein family line of vampires is very long and very vast, right? You've got Blood von Karstein, you've got Manfred von Karstein, and uh, these are not the only vampires of the uh, Vampire Counts faction or the Vampire Counts um, army in the in the tabletop. You know, you have a lot of these these lords and bloodlines of the ancient lore. I guess you could say sixth edition. Things started to really change around the sixth and seventh editions of uh, Warhammer Fantasy. They dropped the bloodlines. No longer did we get the von Karsteins, the Lamians. Um, the Strigoi and the uh, Blood Dragons, we got just the Von Karstein vampire family and, and then the individual vampire lords. But one lord really stands out that they haven't added to Total War Warhammer, and that's Conrad Von Karstein. Uh, we talked briefly about the vampire, civ vampire Wars not too long ago. In fact, I think it was a year ago, a year ago today. But there was a second vampire war. Vlad Von Karstein led a, a grand incursion against the Empire and was uh, defeated at, I believe it was Altdorf. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, and when he was defeated, his army was kind of um, wandering. Like, well, what the hell am I going to do? I don't I don't have our undead lore without a nose, our Michael Jackson, our undead Michael Jackson. And Isabella von Karstein was long dead too at that point. And Manfred was, was really a kind of behind the scenes player at this point. So up comes Conrad von Karstein, and Conrad von Karstein is a lot different than, the, than his, uh, than his, I guess you could say, father and his brother, uh, Vlad being the father, the primogenitor of the von Karstein bloodline, and uh, Manfred being uh, definitely his brother. But I want to talk about Conrad today. We'll talk about his little lore blurb as we always do, and we'll go into some of the rules of how he would operate in the tabletop because he's a little bit different than some of the other. Vampire, well, than all the vampire counts we've dealt with so far. And we'll, we'll talk about that as soon as we jump into this lore blurb and, and the rules, the subsequent rules after that. So, here is Conrad von Karstein, also sometimes known as Conrad the Bloody or Conrad the Beast or even Conrad the Butcher. There are few things more dangerous than a violent lunatic, but one of them is an immortal violent lunatic. lunatic. With the strength and speed of a vampire, Adding a literal a literal thirst for blood to Conrad's figurative one did little for the noble's stretched sanity. The first of the von Karstein had considered this a potential advantage, and Conrad Conrad was one of the last of the von Karstein to be embraced into the family. Perhaps Conrad's complete lack of scruples and his tenuous grasp on reality amused Vlad. In retrospect, however, it might have better served his dynasty if Vlad had simply cut off Conrad's head when the chance first presented itself. His insane depravity resulted in far more harm than good. Once given the blood kiss, Conrad made no attempt to hide his supernatural powers and fed openly on his friends and subjects, as well as rats, cats, cows, wandering peddlers, and anything else with a pulse that came too close. Conrad appointed himself as something of a berserk enforcer for Vlad executing anyone who displeased the Count. This, naturally, also included anyone who displeased Conrad. Over time, the enc this encompassed many victims, including enemy generals, priests of all descriptions, people with a squint, and several necromancers who had laughed at Conrad's pitiful magical skills. When Conrad usurped power after Vlad's death, he took a very different route view to necromancers and encouraged many to join his entourage. He rewarded them greatly, for though he was barking mad, Conrad was no fool. He needed the necromancers to raise his armies for him, and while they served him well, he guaranteed their safety. In battle, Conrad would lose all of self-restraint. He reveled in the shedding of blood and was a skilled swordsman. Driven on by a never-ending rage, Conrad led his army more as a bloodthirsty whirlwind than a general, his unconscious will pushing his minions forwards. However, when in this state, Conrad was also prone to excessive feeding and would sometimes stop in the middle of a battle to lick clean his armor and sword or drink from fallen enemies. It was during one of these blood-drunk fits that Conrad was slain by the dwarf Thane Grufbad and the Elector Count Helmar. So, you can definitely see a, 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 definitely a more melee-centric vampire lord, a, a berserk vampire lord for that matter. And he's one of the cooler lords in the uh, tabletop. He's got a really, really awesome model. You know, he's just kind of like bent over, licking blood as it drips down his blade. And it's really kind of, uh, it's really kind of awesome, I think. And we'll go into 
the second Vampire War in a, in a video. I know we had promised to do that some years ago, and I think it's time we finally revisit that. So we'll go into the second Vampire War and the uh, subsequent series of events afterward. But in the, uh, in the end of that war, Conrad isn't just like... The, the end of this little lore blurb kind of makes it sound like Conrad was just slain as he was mumbling through the battlefield, uh, licking uh, dwarf blood off of hammers, and then killed by uh, Grufbad and Helmar. That's not the case. In fact, he lost, like, very drastically. He lost at the Battle of Grim Moor. And as a result, like, he kind of just, like, flew into the hills of Aberheim. And he was kind of, like, seen wandering through a uh, uh, forest in this, like, mad blood-drunk fit. And that's where Grufbad captured him, and Electric Count Helmar uh, drove his runebang through the Count's heart. And uh, Helmar is actually the son of an um, a Electric Count that was killed by Vlad himself. So, kind of one of those overarching justice will be served type karma situations. But Conrad is, again, very different from our other Manfred and our other our Vlad and our Isabella von Karstein. These are, the three of these are all hybrid lords. Conrad would be solely a melee lord. He has got no magical abilities whatsoever. So this kind of might be the 7th and 8th edition's way of offering us a what would used to be called a blender lord. Um, when I played vampire counts, I had what was called a vampire, uh, a, uh, vampire lord blender lord. And what that meant is that you could take certain special abilities, red fury being one of them, and um, that would essentially make this, this vampire that had nine or ten weapon skill which is ten being the max in the game and they could just literally blend through units just just cutting things down and it was awesome i loved i loved my my uh, blender lord and you can kind of kind of create that here you use red fury you use quick uh, quick blood and i think it was like master striker beguile or no no it's dread knight was the other one so it's like dread knight gives you plus two weapon skill which meant you had nine um, Quick Blood gave you always strike first, meaning every time you came into combat, you were the one that would swing first. And Red Fury meant, means that, and we'll talk about Red Fury because it is on Conrad's profile in Tabletop. The way Red Fury works is, if I make an attack and the attack hits you, like passes through your armor and wounds you, then I can continue to make attacks for every unsaved wound. So let's say I roll all four of my attacks, I hit you with all four attacks, I get to make four more. But that was the kind of crux of red fury you can just literally just keep hacking at things and keep going and keep going and keep going and the way they kind of balance him out a little bit in the uh in the tabletop is they give him only two wounds so he's a little bit more um papery you know he's a little bit thinner than some of the other lords um like isabella and von karsh and uh, uh man von karsh both have two wounds as well but lod has got uh three wounds so Again, uh, this is this is. I'm speaking Greek. If you've never played the uh, tabletop, so I apologize here. But I'm trying to give a frame of reference to some of the other players that do play tabletop. But how will we see that translate into Total War Warhammer? You know, we have this guy who's got Red Fury, which means he just keeps attacking and keeps attacking and keeps attacking. Um, I wouldn't say it gives him frenzy because we'll talk about that in a sec on his other rule. But maybe it gives him a, a, a constant special rule with Red Fury that. I know Red Fury is already in the game in some way or another um, with uh, the campaign special abilities, but I'd love to see it where. Rather than increasing melee attack or, or melee strength, it was maybe something that, that gave him health for every every time he was in combat, he could use it almost like an Arkan, uh, Arkan's uh, uh, Tomb Blade or whatever it's called, how he can pop that and it heals him. As long as he stays in combat, he can use that ability. It'd be cool if Red Fury was the same thing. As long as he was in combat, he could use the ability and it will um, come down off its cooldown and you can use it again, maybe on a two minute or three minute cooldown like, like we see some of the other uh, items with that with that same kind of trait but this is a vampiric power so it would have to just be a simple activatable thing or a passive that means that he constantly replenishes as he fights meaning he's a little bit scarier since he doesn't have any access to magic we have to find a way to make him a bit scarier on um the actual uh, um combat map we have to make it so that yeah he's this guy who's who's this famed just destroyer of worlds this this guy who comes in with two swords and buzzes his way through things and i think a way of doing that would be almost like giving him some sort of passive regeneration and red fury i think is a really good way of doing that so as far as his special rules go you know he's got the uh, the typical kind of stuff that you would get from a vampire um he's got the hunger he's got undead he's vampiric um also though he's got one bat short of a belfry that's the name of the special rule and the way this works is you're 
Conrad has a 50-50 shot. You roll a dice. He's either going to become stupid. That's the name of the rules. Stupidity. Or he gets subject to frenzy. So maybe there's some sort of passive thing that's always kind of rolling for Conrad when he's in combat. That it has the ability to give him frenzy, which is, I'd say, a, a very beneficial trait to have on, on the, uh, on the uh, battle map. Or it does, like, Rampage, where you can't control him and he just kind of goes off, does what he wants. So, rather than giving him stupidity, which they haven't put into this game in any way, shape, or form, I think this is a really good way to kind of put that in there. Because they did that kind of with uh, the Cold Ones by giving them Rampage, so I'd love to see something similar to that mechanic with this. So, like, oh, okay, maybe he's in this completely controlled, frenzy, frenzied uh, uh, um, manner where he's just destroying things that you're controlling, or he's just gone off the deep the deep end he's got he's got the blood thirst the blood he's blood drunk and he just is just buzzing through with things left and right that'd be a really cool way i think we could do conrad von karstein but uh his magic item his last thing here is uh, the sword of valdenhof the heirloom of the lords of valdenhof castle has never been more expertly wielded than in the hands of conrad this spirit possessed sword bites deeply when it strikes essentially this this thing just causes multiple wounds but it allows him to, he's got two weapons. So maybe this means he's got AP and he's got also um, a uh, anti-infantry. So he's basically gonna be a really heavy kind of like assassin type character that you can throw at almost anything. And I would want him to be very scary on the battlefield. He's gonna be, have limited mobility in the sense that he doesn't have any mounts. Maybe they give him a mount to kind of make it so that he's up to par. I feel like majority of the Lords that don't have mounts are just insufferable. <laughs> Uh, Krell just gets knocked over left and right by anything with a mount or a doom bowl, like stuff like that. Um, I think that not having lords on mounts is, is so hard to control, especially in a competitive multiplayer arena where you can just negate half their abilities or their functionality by keeping them knocked over, which is kind of bullshit. So maybe they give him at least a horse so he doesn't just get knocked around like a pinata. That would be, I think, a good way to approach him. But I want Conrad to be, rather than having this this hybrid character, which is very tanky, doesn't really output a ton of damage, but can do a lot of spells. I'd rather have a character that is no spells, extremely terrifying to get into close combat with, and maybe is moderately tanky because he is a vampire. He does have a passive regen. And I think Conrad would be a very different approach to how we have a vampire count's army. Sure, you can throw Vlad or Manfred in, but for the most part, they're, they're kind of supporting the army by bolstering it with spells or bolstering it with um, any kind of, uh, like their presence alone, like the, the actual presence of Manfred itself can bolster the army through their fear and whatnot, and their just tanking abilities alone are really great. But again, Conrad would be great because you, you'd, you'd have to use necromancers to keep the army up and running through the lore of vampires. And that'd be a really cool way to uh, to leverage Conrad von Karstein to actually bring, bring a spotlight onto necromancers, which I think are used quite often, but I think they're used more in niche builds and less in like a truly competitive uh, vampire counts build. This concludes our little video here for today for Conrad von Karstein as we kind of work through some of the uh, the lores of the armies of the past and some of the cooler lords within their lore that have not been added to Total War Warhammer. Um, some people, after our, our last video here on Elspeth, they were asking, you know, how do you think that this would be integrated into the game? And I'd really love to see either a paid content or a free content, I don't care, um, of a pack, like a lord pack. Like, hey, here's the Vampire Counts lords we, we haven't touched on, which I think a Vampire Counts was a poor example here because there's almost every damn name vampire I've ever heard of is, in, <laughs> is, a, is a choosable lord. Like, outside of the 6th edition lords where um, you've got stuff like Zacharias the Ever-Living, uh, stuff like that. The majority of the lords are in the game for the vampire counts, but Empire is a really good example. Use Empire. So that way we can get like Hellborg and all the other individuals into the game under one pack, just open shut case. And I think that we already kind of need this because those those previous game one races need a facelift. And I mean, even look at the Wood Elves, they're missing like stuff like the Twilight Sisters. They can use a, a little bit of an oomph as well. So I think this is a really good way to kind of uh, further the longevity of uh, Total War Warhammer 1 and 2 while we wait for Total War Warhammer 3. Because you think about it, guys, Three Kingdoms is going to come out at the end of this year, and we're not going to see uh, TWWH3 until July or June, probably. Maybe even August or September, like we did for the for, for the second game's launch. I mean, and if they don't fuck up Norska again, then if, if they do fuck it up, we'll see it in 2021. So it all depends on how... Um, 
they want to do this and if they want to keep the longevity of those original races alive. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video here today. If you did, go ahead and like the video, comment below. Let me know some of the other lords you'd love to hear more about that we haven't touched on from some of the current races in the game. Love to expand on those as, uh, as we see fit. But uh, thanks for uh, watching here today, guys. Have a good one and take care. Oh, and don't forget to like the video. That big thumb helps me out more than you think. I like to get thumbed. Uh, <clears throat> thanks for watching. Bye. Oh.